Part 3. This example illustrates how to use the double integration method to find a deflection equation for a beam consisting of multiple segments, each having a unique modulus of elasticity. We wish to formulate a deflection equation for a beam made up of two segments, an aluminum segment and a steel one. It is important to note that here we cannot assume a constant modulus of elasticity for the beam, as aluminum and steel have different E's. Let's refer to the modulus of elasticity for aluminum as E sub A, and use E sub S for the modulus of elasticity of steel. For ease of calculations, let's assume the ratio of E sub S to E sub A is 3, or E sub S equals 3 times E sub A. Both segments have the same cross-section, therefore moment of inertia I remains constant for the entire beam. Since the beam is subjected to a concentrated load of P at point A, we can write the bending moment equation as mx equals negative px. Similar to the previous example, here we need to set up two deflection equations, one for the aluminum segment and one for the steel segment. The deflection equation for the aluminum segment is given by the double integral of m over e sub a times i. Let's refer to this equation as v1. v1 is valid for x between 0 and l. The deflection equation for the steel segment is given by the double integral of m over e sub s times i. We refer to this equation as v2, which is valid for x between l and 2l. Substituting negative px for m, we get Furthermore, since E sub S equals 3 times E sub A, let's rewrite V2 using E sub A. Here is what we have so far. This is V1, and this is V2. Now integrate each function twice to get the deflection equations. Then V1 becomes negative Px cubed over 6 E sub Ai plus C1x plus C2. And V2 becomes negative Px cubed over 18 E sub Ai plus C3x plus C4. To solve for the integration constants, C1 through C4, we need four boundary condition equations. We can get two equations by imposing two continuity constraints at point B, where the aluminum segment is attached to the steel segment. Equation 1. Deflection must be continuous at B, that is, V1 at L equals V2 at L. Equation 2. Slope of the elastic curve must be continuous at B, hence, theta1 at L equals theta2 at L. The remaining two equations come from the support conditions at the fixed end of the beam. At point C, deflection and the slope of the elastic curve must be zero. That is, V2 at X equals 2L must be zero, and theta2 at 2L must be zero. The slope equation can be obtained by taking the derivative of the deflection equation with respect to X. So, Theta 1 equals negative Px squared over 2 E sub Ai plus C1. And Theta 2 equals negative Px squared over 6 E sub Ai plus C3. Here are the four equations. Solving these equations for C1 through C4, we get Making proper substitutions in the deflection equations, we get V1 equals negative P over 18 E sub AI times 3x cubed minus 18xL squared plus 20L cubed and V2 equals negative P over 18 E sub AI times X minus 2L squared times X plus 4L. The deflection of the beam is given by V1 when X is between 0 and L, and by V2 when X is between L and 2L.
These functions, when plotted between 0 and 2L, look like this. Here is V1. And here is V2. To define the beam's elastic curve, we use this part of V1 and this part of V2. To summarize, assuming you already know how to formulate moment equations algebraically and how to integrate continuous functions, then the double integration method lends itself to 1. Determining the number of equations needed to correctly model the beam's deflection, and 2. To identify and use the necessary boundary conditions for determining the integration constants. Let's see if you can correctly determine the needed number of equations and the necessary boundary conditions for these beams. Pause the video if you wish to work on these problems, as the answers will be displayed shortly. Solution for problem 1 We need four deflection equations for this beam. Since each equation has two integration constants, we need a total of eight boundary equations. They are, deflection at the roller support must be zero. Deflection at B, where the steel and aluminum segments meet, must be continuous. Slope at B must also be continuous. Deflection at C, where the aluminum and steel segments meet, must be continuous. Slope at C must also be continuous. Deflection at D, where the concentrated load is applied, must be continuous. Slope at D must also be continuous. Deflection at the pin support must be zero. Solution for problem two. We need three deflection equations for this beam. Since each equation has two integration constants, we need a total of six boundary equations. Deflection at the pin support must be zero. Deflection at B, where the beam rests on an internal roller, must be continuous and zero. This means both V1 and V2, evaluated at point B, must yield zero. Slope at B must also be continuous. Deflection at C, where the aluminum and steel segments meet, must be continuous. Slope at C must also be continuous. Solution for problem 3. We need three deflection equations for this beam because the distributed load divides the beam into three segments. Since each equation has two integration constants, we need a total of six boundary equations. Deflection at the pin support must be zero. Deflection at B must be continuous Slope at B must also be continuous. Deflection at C must be continuous. Slope at C must also be continuous. Deflection at the roller support must be zero. Solution for problem four.
We need two deflection equations for this beam. Since each equation has two integration constants, we need a total of four boundary equations. They are deflection at the pin support must be zero. Deflection at B, where the beam rests on an internal roller, must be continuous and zero. This means both V1 and V2, evaluated at point B, must yield zero. Slope at B must also be continuous.